Welcome to Barcelona for Qualcomm's 5G Summit, where we are joined by Enrico Salvatore. He's Senior Vice President and President EMEA at Qualcomm. Enrico, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. So Enrico, what will be the focus of Qualcomm's 5G Summit this year? So in the summit, we are discussing on 5G. 5G in terms of what has been done so far, in particular in 2019, but even more important in terms of what we will do for 5G in 2020 and moving forward. Of course, a lot has happened since last year's summit in Hong Kong. So can you take us through the key milestones that have been achieved over the last year and the state of play right now? So key milestone of 5G in 2019 has been definitely for Europe, uh, the commercial launches. We have been able uh, as a European industry to stay in the leading pack of the 5G regions that are launching US, Korea, China, Japan, but Europe is part of the same group. So we are proud of that. Uh, and we have been able in second half of 2019 in particular to launch in many of the European countries with most of the European operators. We're focusing a lot on consumer launches, but what about the benefits that 5G will bring to other verticals? So 5G is a technology that is bridging from the mobile broadband, so the traditional consumer, to new sector uh, that will benefit of this technology. So in particular, indust in industrial automation. So the IoT in the broader sense. Industrial automation that is here uh, at the show uh, with uh, several use cases that uh, will be in particular manufacturing. Manufacturing facilities that will take benefit of the private network, the low latency, making sure that all the machines will be connected wireless, but also uh, with some level of intelligence so that we can also leverage 5G and uh, AI together to combine and deliver performance. Automotive. Automotive is the other segment that is maturing for the uh, wireless uh, and connectivity. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Automotive that is paving the path to the autonomous driving concept, but with uh, some uh, steps, intermediate steps, like uh, the cellular V2X technology that is part of the 5G in uh, release 16, and that will uh, deliver the performance to connect all the cars, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to pedestrian, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to cloud. So all those uh, uh, new sectors, new for the mobile technology, but definitely a traditional uh, industry sector, will benefit uh, from uh, the 5G because 5G is the enabler for the digital transformation to keep all those industry segments competitive in the market. So tell us what will 5G do to boost innovation and productivity generally? So 5G is, uh, <coughs> is uh, creating a new technology that is uh, bridging what we do for uh, consumer in a mobile broadband also for new segment of the industry. So in particular with the IoT, we are bridging and taking the, uh, into the IoT in the industry, technology that is bringing uh, new performance, in, in particular the capacity, we can do wireless, but also the low latency, and all those uh, in, uh, <coughs> feature set are enabling new uh, uh, service and new application for uh, the industry. So how important is collaboration for a successful 5G future? So at the summit here, we have uh, many players from the industry. And uh, with uh, the keynote, they participated uh, in explaining what they can do, what uh, they would like to do, thanks to the 5G. And we are very happy and proud to work with them. So in particular, for the industry segment, uh, we had, uh, for instance, uh, a presentation from the energy sector, Enel, that is explaining what could be done with the smart grid, uh, thanks to the wireless technology on 5G, reducing the low latency to allow uh, the uh, improvement of the performance. But in general, in general, the industry is looking for uh, in the middle of the digital transformation. And this is something that uh, they want to achieve thanks of, to the 5G technology, because that will uh, enable them to stay competitive while all the industry sector is moving to the digital transformation era. Finally, after the first commercial network launches in 2019, what can we expect for the rest of this year and next year, of course, 2020? Oh, there is still a lot of work to be done. So uh, we are here uh, in particular planning what uh, will be next. So we need to, for, first of all, to complete the commercial launches in, in the European region, because there are still countries where are not yet on the 5G. But even more important, we need to move uh, expanding the coverage, expanding the coverage of 5G, because that is reprecondition 
transition to F5G in terms of service and application. So coverage, coverage, and coverage. Uh, on top of that, uh, we need to continue de de developing the full 5G. So not only in the sub-6 frequency, but also in the millimeter wave. And those are the steps that we are already planning with the operators partners, with uh, uh, OEM, our customer, and also with the infrastructure vendors that are uh, a part of the ecosystem to make sure that the 5G network and, and performance and feature set will be deployed in uh, Europe, but all around the world, because here actually, we talk a lot about Europe, but we have a, a, a customer on operators that are representing all the regions. We are from China, we are from North America, from Korea, from Japan. So here in the 5G Summit, we are really making the point and the status for the global 5G. Enrico Salvatore, thank you very much. Thank you.